You know, I don't think people wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I don't want to be successful. Like, I don't want to part of that. People don't wake up and say that. But there are a few things that stand in the way between people being successful and unsuccessful. <music> Hello everyone, I'm Tanya Rapley and welcome to my channel. I'm looking forward to talking about this subject because I think it's something that affects a lot of people, right? And so this video is about how to be more successful, AKA how to stop self-sabotaging, AKA how to stop procrastinating. No, they are not the same, but usually they show up together. So let's dig on right into this. So as an entrepreneur, that is, hasn't always been my MO. I can't say that I grew up wanting to be an entrepreneur. I didn't really have examples of entrepreneurs growing up. I went to school for the social services. My jobs out of college were in community service oriented roles, but I kind of just fell into owning a business. And because I fell into owning a business, I dealt with imposter syndrome quite a bit. And with that imposter syndrome came me self-sabotaging and me questioning if I had the potential, if I could be successful, as successful as the other people I saw who had either achieved Ivy League degrees or had large social followings or had these things that I didn't feel like I had at the time. From there, I decided to do a few things. I'm gonna share those few things that really helped me turn that corner and become more successful. Since then, I have been on the cover of Black Enterprise. I have created a six-figure financial education business. My husband and I recently acquired another company that I'm currently growing. I've become an Amazon bestseller and a mompreneur. I've done quite a few things and it be was because I overcame the tendency to self-sabotage, procrastinate, and just the overall fear that I didn't have what it took to be successful. So I'm digging in and giving you a few things. Before we get started though, let's talk about what self-sabotage is. So self-sabotage is actively or passively taking steps to prevent ourselves from achieving our goals. Now, this could be on the subconscious level, this could be consciously, this could be something that we've learned and that we do not intend, or it could be something that is very intentional. I've seen people who engage in self-sabotaging behaviors just so they won't get sabotaged by other people. And it's a sad situation to see, but it's also real, and it requires a lot of healing to deal with that. So here are the three things that you can do to end self-sabotaging behavior and become more successful or the things that will challenge it. So the first one is actually reflecting. If you feel like you are self-sabotaging, ask yourself, why am I self-sabotaging? And asking yourself if certain behaviors are self-sabotaging behaviors. While I think that, you know, we can get help by talking to friends, we can get help by posting things on social media and getting feedback and listening to podcasts, which are all valuable tools in our healing and healing of these behaviors. Don't negate the importance of getting good help. People who are trained to help you identify these behaviors and overcome them. Even as someone who felt like they had dealt with their self-sabotaging behaviors, it was really helpful to work with my therapist to really be have a space to freely vocalize my fears. A lot of people don't have the space to freely vocalize their fears without feeling like they're gonna be judged. That's what therapists are there for, and they can help you work through that. Therapists I know can cost money, and if you're watching this because you're trying to start a business or whatever it may be, you might not have the funds. There's an organization called the Open Path Collective that is striving to make therapy accessible for all. I will include a link down in the bottom. And while we're talking about a link in the bottom, please comment if this is resonating with you. Please like or subscribe. Oftentimes we have therapists on that platform that are available on a sliding scale. By sliding scale, it means you pay what you can afford to pay based on what their rates are. So that's one resource. And then the second one, um, as a black woman, I found my therapist on Therapy for Black Girls. They have a directory on Online, and I love my therapist. She's the best therapist I've ever worked with and I would found her because of that particular resource. They also have an amazing podcast that you can also listen to and just find out more insight from mental health professionals and even look into Psychology Today and so forth to see if you can find a therapist. There are apps that you can use and so forth just so you can talk to someone about the self-sabotaging behaviors. The second one is to dig into what motivates you. So one of the ways to be successful is to be motivated by something bigger than yourself. If we were motivated by ourselves, then we would be, then everybody would be successful or everybody who wanted to be successful would be successful. Sometimes ourselves aren't enough and we have to dig into things outside of that. So one of the things that I did when I started my business or was starting my business was that I found this motivational video on YouTube. It was just incredibly powerful. It resonated with me at the time and I took it and put it into one of those sites where you can actually pull the audio from a YouTube video. So I pulled the audio, saved it in my iTunes, and then I put it on my phone. 
And so when I was walking through the streets of New York, when I was getting on the subway, when I was just doing anything with my idle time, I was listening to this motivational audio. And that lit the fire under me to this day, even recently with purchasing a new business. And you know, it's been more of a challenge than I thought it was gonna be, but things are going rather well, but not as well as I was hoping they would go. One of the things that I started doing again was listening to motivational audio. Just listening to things that reminded me of my why, that reminded me that I could do it, that reminded me why I was, that I was powerful and putting me in that place and that feeling of power and just giving me that motivation that we don't really get now that you know everybody doesn't have everybody might not have that person or life that's motivating them so until you find that person motivational audio is great motivational books motivational accounts whatever on social media can really be helpful for you to look beyond yourself and to look into something that helps you circumvent those feelings of self-sabotage when they show up the next one is defining your why, like clearly defining your why. Not that, oh, I don't wanna be broke, or not, you know, well, you know, I just don't like working for anybody else. Maybe that is your why, and that's cool. Maybe that is strong enough to motivate you. I understand I wasn't necessarily the best employee. But what I will say is sometimes we need something bigger than that. We need like, you know, for me, I knew that I wanted to be a entrepreneur when I had a child so that I could parent on my terms. I came from two military parents. They weren't able to parent me on their terms because they worked for the military. They told them where they had to be and when. I didn't want that life for my child and I didn't want that life for me as a parent. So I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur for that reason. And then I also knew that I enjoy freedom. When I discovered my personal values, they were joy, freedom, and personal growth. And then the third thing is to join a mastermind or an accountability group of some sort or get an accountability partner. Like I said, you can't necessarily do it all yourself and sometimes you need others to motivate you. Masterminds are great. There are several online. There are mastermind Facebook communities. I participated in several masterminds from speaking masterminds for when I was growing my speaking business to business masterminds to home ownership masterminds or buying multifamily unit masterminds. I participated in them. They are powerful and there are a lot online. So I definitely say look into a mastermind if you feel like you need something else to motivate you. Sometimes they're gonna cost money. Sometimes you're not cheap, but they are worth it as long as you're doing the work and it's a reputable coach that can help guide you through the work. And then if you don't feel like you want to join a mastermind, look for an accountability partner. Accountability partners can be tricky because if they're a procrastinator and you're a procrastinator and you both aren't committed to action, then it's just gonna be a whole bunch of procrastination going on. And you don't want that, but if you have an accountability partner it's like, no, we're gonna do this, then that is also a helpful tool. When I was writing my book, I had a book accountability partner and she really motivated me to hit the finish line within the last month of my book. And it doesn't mean it's gonna be an ongoing relationship, but you do build that long-standing relationship with someone that you guys can go your separate ways. And when you come back, you realize what place that person played in your life. You need something outside of you to motivate you. The last thing is practicing mindfulness. So practicing mindfulness and being aware of when you are actually engaging in self-sabotaging behaviors, when you're procrastinating and not doing the things that will make you successful. I'm currently reading the book, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And one of the things he says, like you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the success of your systems. I might be saying it wrong, but it's something along those lines. You fall to how strong your systems are. And one of the systems that you can put in place is to be mindful, to recognize and reroute. I have a toddler and one of the things that we learn is like, you know, you redirect. When they're throwing a tantrum, you redirect. Hey, look at this over here, look at that. Oh, wouldn't you like to do this? You can redirect yourself. A lot of things that work for kids, they work on us too. You can redirect yourself and say, you know what? I realize that I'm going down a self-sabotaging tunnel. Tanya said I need to stop. Stop and I'm gonna move on to something else that is conducive to where I want to be, who I want to be, and what I want to accomplish. And so I know it's sound, I'm making it sound like it's simple. It's not necessarily simple, but once you become more mindful and aware of your thoughts, or that, that trigger goes off and you say, you know what, I'm self-sabotaging right now. What can I do to counteract what I am doing to self-sabotage? What can I do to be more active towards my goals instead of passive or even maybe instead of turning back the dial on the progress that I've made towards my goals? How do I turn this back up? That's what it means to be mindful as it relates to ending self-sabotage and procrastinating. These are three things that I'm not gonna say are gonna guarantee that you're gonna be successful, but they are ingredients that will help you become more successful. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. 
If you like it and if you feel like some of these things you've done in your own life to overcome your self-sabotaging habits and be more successful, please comment below. And if you like my channel, I promise you there is more coming. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button or you can follow me on Instagram at tanya.rapley. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be passionate, be profitable, be powerful. Thank <laughs> you.